Sukiyo so, okay, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to MSBS Weekly Guided Meditation by Prago. Today is 15 December 2020, and it's the last class for 2020. Uh, I think we will skip this as the shorter the time. Okay, MSBS is. We are very fortunate to have with us Mante Adibalo, popularly known as Prago. Mante was born on July 14, 1985, and he had his Biko ordination under the Thai Dhamma sect at Sandy Forest Monastery in Johor, Malaysia in 2008. Mante is currently the Vice President of Wat Palelai Buddhist Temple, Singapore. After this, Pante will be leading the homage to the Buddha and taking out the five precepts for Buddhists. Now, let us compose our minds, our palms together, and welcome, Pante. Let's go okay. over to Singapore, Pante. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Terence, for the kind introduction. So now we shall do the opening chants. <coughs> homage. Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Satma Sambhutatsa Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Satma Sambhutatsa Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Satma Sambhutatsa Three refuges, Bhutan Saranam Gachami, Amman Saranam Gachami, Sankham Saranam Gachami, <coughs> Dutiyampi Bhutan Saranam Gachami, Dutiyampi Dhammam Saranam Gachami, Dutiyampi Sankham Saranam Gachami, Tatiyampi Bhutan Saranam Gachami, Tatiyampi Dhammam Saranam Gachami, Tatiyampi Sankham Saranam Gachami. And the five uh, precepts. Panati Pata Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Adina Dana Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Kami Sumichachara Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Mutsavada Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Sutra Miraya Maja Padmadatana Viramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami <coughs> sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <coughs> All right, and good evening, uh, brothers and sisters of the Dhamma. Today is the last lesson for 2020, uh, this Tuesday's MSPS session. So today's uh, topic is again on dependent origination. Uh, hopefully we can clear by today. I think we should clear by today. There's only one PowerPoint slide left. Uh, so we just need to run through the, the key tenets you know, for those who are new here, right? Uh, what we have gone through. Okay, so uh, next slide. <coughs> Okay, so this dependent origination is uh, important because it's going to do a right view, yeah? So uh, next. <coughs> so we talk about the 12 things. <coughs> Basically, these are the 12. First, you have ignorance. Uh, number two, uh, because of ignorance, then it causes right, conditions, uh, fabrications called mental formations or karma and followed by 
consciousness, then consciousness conditions, name and form, nama rupa, which is the five aggregates, which uh, again conditions six sense basis and conditions contact, conditions feeling, conditions craving, conditions clinging, conditions becoming, conditions birth, and conditions aging and death, which is uh, the last two, which is uh, suffering. So basically, these are the 12 things, right? But uh, in order to know how it works, we move on to the next slide. <clears throat> it is the reverse order. This is uh, for people who are interested in uh, ending this suffering. So the forward order is to show how suffering arises, and the reverse order is to show how suffering can be seized. Right? So the reverse order starts from the top, which is by ending of ignorance, then you end these uh, fabrications and uh, consciousness and uh, all the rest. So it goes like a chain reaction. So the forward order starts off like a chain reaction, reverse order also, you stop, you nip it by the butt and you end uh, the chain reaction. So this is the forward and reverse order of dependent origination. So uh, <clears throat> how does it really work? Okay, next. <clears throat> okay, we don't go into detail, we're going to skip this. I'm going to skip, 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 skip. <clears throat> okay, so uh, skip. All right, okay, so basically, uh, how it actually functions, uh, regardless of whatever method we try to uh, understand dependent origination, it's usually uh, this model, right? So this is the first uh, methodology of understanding dependent origination. So depending on I and forms, I is your six and basis, your organs, uh, <clears throat> then the form is basically like the screen you're looking at now. Yeah, yes, shape, yes, uh, no, certain colors, certain shapes, then uh, arises I consciousness. Right. So there are many things going on. We have so many senses. We have the uh, ears, the nose, the tongue. Uh, the body, right? The sense of touch and the thinking. So all these are our different uh, doorways to experiencing the world. So when we have these organs and we have the external uh, object, external stimuli, then uh, when we pay attention to it, then it's called uh, arising of that consciousness. So if you are paying attention from outside, then it's called eye consciousness. If you are paying attention from our ears, then it's called ear consciousness. So when the three things meet, right, which is your organ, the external object, and the awareness, then these three is called contact. And when there's contact, then it comes feeling, right? So it's either uh, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral feeling, and followed by craving. So if you have a uh, pleasant feeling, the natural uh, default programming, the kind of uh, reflex, kind of action, untrained, uh, unconscious kind of reaction would be greed. And if you have unpleasant feeling, then the uh, automatic response or the reaction would be aversion or hatred, right? So the craving has two things, either greed, hatred, or one more, uh, delusion. So if you have neutral feeling, right? Let's say you look at a screen or hear some sound, you find it neutral, then uh, you, you have this delusion which is you believe you know, things will stay the same, things will stay permanent. And once you have these three kinds of craving, greed, hatred, and delusion, then it comes clinging. You cling to that emotion. So if let's say uh, you feel greedy, you want, uh, maybe you want to aim for a nice house or aim for a nice car, and then it becomes, you no, know, and you keep on thinking about it the whole day, and yeah, you become something like a kind of obsession, obsession, right? Maybe uh, this uh, COVID, you want to go for the shopping, so now we can't go out uh, and, and for this uh, group mass shopping, so people do it online. So there is certain form of clinging. Likewise, for hatred, if a person gets angry, then they will cling to that anger the whole day, right? Because, uh, interesting, although that Emotion, we know it's negative, but we tend to cling. So clinging has a few forms. We have the, <coughs> uh, sorry, the next one is becoming. Becoming has 
uh, a few form, right? This uh, desire becoming, form and formless becoming. So depending on what you're clinging. So if you're clinging on uh, this human uh, realm, kind of sixth sense, desire, pleasures, then you have this thing called the desire becoming. And if let's say you meditate and enter into concentration, then you cling on to form and formless uh, kind of concentrations, then you become form and formless becoming, right? Then which will lead to birth. <coughs> and from birth, then you experience aging and death. So this birth right here, uh, again, have various interpretations. It can mean literal birth. That means you no. Know, a person born from the womb, uh, no, I mean conception, getting pregnant, so that is one kind of birth. Or the other kind of birth is the <coughs> appearing, appearing of the aggregates, appearing of the personality. So that is uh, the two different kinds of explanations. Either way, once we uh, cling and crave, then that will uh, start the cycle of suffering. Okay, next. Okay, then the next one is... Uh, Cessation, ending of the, <clears throat> of the world, right? So how it ends is if we are dependent on I and forms, basically the same, right? Then we have the three things, contact, and then the feeling, and from feeling, conditions, craving. <clears throat> so to end uh, suffering, it actually works from here. Now from the remainderless cessation and fading away of that very craving comes a cessation of clinging or substance, yeah? So to end the cycle of this uh, craving, right? <clears throat> we will talk about it later, but to end uh, this dependent origination, we need to stop at craving. So this is the practical uh, guideline. It stops at craving. However, uh, earlier on, we talked about the reverse order. It stops at ignorance, right? So how is it so? So we're going to move on. Next uh, PowerPoint. So these are the 12 things we talk about the... Uh, uh, the three lifetime model, which is the uh, modern uh, version of Theravada Buddhism. They talk about this three uh, model, which I won't talk about it now. <clears throat> the next. Right, so this is the sutta that uh, if you just read it on the surface value, then most people will think that you know, this uh, consciousness is actually got to do with rebirth. Is the consciousness that goes from one life to another life, from one body to another body, right? So, uh, right, uh, I won't uh, go into detail. <coughs> next. Right, so next. <coughs> okay, so we talk about how to end this craving. So earlier on, the 12 links, we just talked about, oh, when we end craving, then we end the rest of suffering. So this is one way to end craving. So if a person were to enter the various levels of concentration, when they want to escape sensual desire, then they will enter this form, uh, concentrations, and to escape form, then they need to enter formless concentrations, and if they want to escape formless concentration, then uh, there will be this uh, cessation or this uh, glimpse of Nibbana. Okay, next. Okay, so this is the sutta that talks about uh, the Buddha contemplating dependent origination uh, using uh, jhanas. Okay, next. Okay, so this is uh, uh, venerable, late venerable Dr. Punaji's uh, model. Uh, next. So from the different jhanas at the end, uh, this uh, suffering. So we won't talk about it. Next. Uh, next. <clears throat> next. Okay, so uh, next, yeah, we won't cover this, which um, we talk about consciousness <clears throat> is actually uh, the moment. So all the while we have awareness, right? Either we are aware, uh, you know, from our seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching. <clears throat> so at uh, the circular worldly higher knowledge would include rebirth. So like, for example, consciousness going from, you know, uh, the pre-Buddhist religions, we would like to talk about consciousness going from one body to another. They were called reincarnation. So when Buddhism invented uh, uh, this combination of dependent origination and the life after next, then they were called rebirth instead of reincarnation. Right. So uh, the 
Buddha's way of analyzing consciousness isn't consciousness that goes from one body to another, right? Consciousness is uh, to be seen uh, here and now. That means from your eye, your nose, tongue, body, mind, uh, observed from a sixth sense basis, right? So uh, that there was a monk who believed you no know, consciousness is uh, you know, moved from one body to another, right? And the Buddha sort of uh, corrected him and told this monk that consciousness uh, in accordance with dependent origination is actually the moment-to-moment -moment, uh, sense-based consciousness, right, from your eye, your nose, tongue, body, and mind. Okay, next. <coughs> okay, uh, yeah, so the Buddha gave an example, you know, a different kind of fuel to burn different kinds of fire, so you have different kinds of uh, fire. Okay, next. <coughs> okay, next. So these are the cases against uh, rebirth, which I won't cover. I talked about in the previous session. Next. Okay, so today we are going to talk about <clears throat> method three to be uh, fair and uh, comprehensive enough. <clears throat> so uh, likewise, <clears throat> if a person were to just read uh, this sutta and, and uh, Maha Nidana Sutta only, then they will believe uh, this uh, recalling of past lives as essential and crucial to understanding dependent origination. Yeah, so that's why they break it up into the three lifetime model. You know, the first two links are the past, and then the several few links present, and the last two links as the future. <clears throat> uh, so again, um, but if we truly understand the uh, total context of the rest of the sutta, we bring into the rest into the uh, trajectory and we try to understand what is this uh, dependent origination about. So it's all about ending this uh, uh, craving. But if a person wants to develop uh, this method, uh, it requires recalling past lives. Okay, so this one, method three, Idipada Vimbanga Sutta is the uh, <clears throat> analysis of the four bases of psychic power. So this is the method where people like to you know, read and try to you know, develop special abilities. And uh, we, in Buddhism, we said there are six higher knowledges. Six higher knowledges. The first five considered as worldly knowledge. So the, the five we've, uh, we've covered in the last lesson uh, in the Susima Sutta. The first one is Recollecting past lives, you know, can be yourself or others. So this is the first higher knowledge. And the second higher knowledge will be uh, <clears throat> this uh, divine eye, you know, seeing uh, long range, seeing uh, unseen beings like the heavenly beings and the ghosts. And the uh, third higher knowledge will be divine ear. That will be the hearing of the divine beings and also long range, right? And the fourth ability is mind uh, reading, right? able to read the thoughts of others. And the fifth higher knowledge would be like telekinesis, you no know, flying, uh, walking through walls, walking on water, whatever it is. So all these are the five uh, higher worldly knowledge. <clears throat> that is to say, <clears throat> uh, these abilities can be developed by anybody that uh, doesn't strive for enlightenment or <clears throat> you don't need to be enlightened to have all these abilities. Some beings are even born with such abilities, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, like heavenly beings, they are born with all these abilities. And uh, similarly, likewise, you know, hungry go uh, those uh, ghosts or spirits, they also have this. And interestingly, as animals as well, right? Sometimes we hear of reports before a natural disaster coming, like a tsunami or an earthquake, they are the first ones to escape or run away. So these are the uh, lower realm beings. They don't need to meditate. <clears throat> okay, so having said these are the five, and we include the last one, the sixth higher knowledge is the uh, knowledge pertaining to ending of the defilements, which is uh, Nibbana or enlightenment. So there are total six higher knowledges in Buddhism. Okay, so uh, this method, uh, if you read the entire sutta, is actually a combination of this light nimitta samadhi and vipassana, right? So if a person just solely develop this light nimitta, right, where a person focus 
on these uh, uh, there are four criteria. First, they need to have a desire. They want to uh, have interest, strong interest to develop. And second, persistence. Uh, third is the strong intent. And fourth, uh, discrimination, able to discern and differentiate uh, the thoughts from whatever your vision is. So this is the four criteria to develop these uh, four bases of uh, psychic power. If not, if you don't have this discrimination, then uh, some people might go crazy. They can't differentiate uh, their stray thoughts uh, from their visions and vice versa. <clears throat> and okay, so there are a few of these uh, things they need to do. First, they need to visualize. Uh, you know, it can be from the body, any kind of visualization exercise actually. So it's the body and also the main one is the perception of light the whole day. So day and night, they need to be uh, perceiving or imagining this uh, white light. <clears throat> so the whole idea is um, the user Alan Borja is a uh, troll yeah you must remove him okay all right <clears throat> Yeah, he came in before once. Yeah, he never identified. He just uh, you know, play uh, music. <clears throat> okay, all right. So uh, now we continue. So these are the <clears throat> uh, four bases of this uh, psychic power, four qualities. So again, uh, like I mentioned several times in the meditation, in our uh, uh, routine, we don't specialize in visualizing the whole day. right? So we try to keep this... Uh, Thing the minimum because it also brings along some risk, right? If a person unable to uh, uh, discern or don't have wisdom, then they might use it for the wrong intent. Or if they do not have enough good karma, enough good merit, then they will, uh, how do you call it? Uh, no, have all the wrong visions, and they might not get frightened, see horror movies the whole day. Yeah? So, uh, <clears throat> so in this. Idipada Vibhanga Sutta, it is said that if a person were to you know, see all these uh, past lives and have all these abilities, then they also can reach liberation. Right? So without uh, uh, jhanas, right? interestingly, a person also can be uh, liberated. <clears throat> okay, so there's a case study where there are a group of monks came and see the Buddha. So the Buddha told uh, these monks that, okay, you know, for many lives, you have uh, died so many times in samsara that you're able to fill the whole ocean of the earth with your tears. So after explaining, you know, you've died so many times, then they reach, liber then they reach liberation, right? So this is the, you know, for some people, it might be possible. Uh, so again, uh, this is not meant for everybody, right? Okay, so I end the theoretical discussion here so i leave the floor open for more q and a because this is the last session for this year all right any questions <clears throat> anyone from the floor okay okay yeah uh, is there any way to summarize what we have learned for this dependent origination? <coughs> any way to summarize? Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, it's just the 12 links. <laughs> yeah, just the 12 links. Okay, so we can go back to the slide on the 12. Uh, forward, backward. Yeah, correct.
Okay, so uh, this is basically like the psycho, uh, psychological analysis of how suffering or this desire arise. So, uh, okay, the summary is basically these 12, right? So from number one to number seven, right? Ignorance to you know, your basic uh, cognitive functions, the reflex functions are basically normal. From ignorance all the way to feeling it happens all the time we can't really do anything about it but the only thing where we can start to take action and do something is on point number eight point number eight on craving so this has to uh, you know, go in line with the four noble truth right so uh, because craving is the cause of suffering so if we were to work on craving and if you want to apply the eightfold path Right, right thoughts, right? Right thoughts is actually the opposite of craving, non-greed, non-hatred, and non-delusion. Whereas cause of suffering or craving is actually greed, hatred, and delusion. So again, uh, to simplify it is still the four noble truths. Right. So this uh, whole lesson is just to make things complicated for everybody so that we have more sessions for everybody. <laughs> right. But in summary, it's just the four noble truths. Right. So once we reduce craving with uh, right thought, then naturally clinging will reduce. Cling, <coughs> clinging will reduce. Anything that doesn't have impermanence, any kind of thought, any kind of emotion that we do not have impermanence, will naturally cling. Even in concentration, some people say, ah, oh, stay with the awareness, no? or stay with your true self, or stay with your Buddha nature, whatever, you know, those, uh, whatever terms you use. If a person were, do, do not have the foundation of this uh, right mindfulness, or uh, mindful of impermanence, and they just stay with that awareness. So if, let's say, a person is greedy, so they stay with that greedy mind, greedy awareness. It doesn't help them. They'll still be greedy. They'll, they'll be clinging to the greed. Or if, let's say, they're angry, and it's just stay with that awareness, and you'll be angry the whole day. So it doesn't uh, help. So you need to apply the right uh, thought, right kind of antidote to the right kind of craving. Right? So if it's angry, we, we need to apply loving kindness. If it's uh, no greed or delusion, then we need impermanence. This is to uh, overcome this uh, craving and clinging. Right? And uh, likewise, <coughs> once uh, this clinging and craving subside, then we say birth ceases. Okay, so we move to the next slide, please. <clears throat> Reverse order. So when, for example, if let's say <clears throat> craving ceases, causing clinging to cease and causes this birth uh, and this uh, aging and death to cease, <clears throat> it's trying to say not the literal or physical kind of birth and death, birth, aging, and death, right? For example, uh, you know, like in the Bodhisattva, the Buddha got enlightened, he removed ignorance, right? He still has mental fabrication. He need to think, he need to move around. He still has the five aggregates. He need to see, hear, smell, think, taste, and touch, right? So if we start from the reverse order where he ended this ignorance, he still has all these functions, it still has all these functions. So what do we mean by cease? What do we mean by cessation? Right? Cessation is the <clears throat> ending or overcoming of the craving. The right kind of, I mean the negative kind of craving. Unwholesome kind of craving. So this is the, uh, how do you call it? <clears throat> the cessation model the reverse order, right? So if a person, likewise, if they were to apply, you know, removing crave, uh, cessation from greed, from craving, then how about aging and death? Okay, let's say a hypothetical scenario, you know, let's say you overcome craving. Does that mean you won't grow old? <laughs> Does that mean no, you won't pass away? Right? Physically, we still go through aging, sickness, and death. Right? So when the Buddha 
gave his first discourse, he mentioned he wanted to beat the death uh, drums of deathlessness, overcome suffering, overcome birth, aging, sickness, and death. So in this life, there's still aging, sickness, and death, right? Physically, but mentally, one is supposed to uh, transcend that one is not affected. So we talked about how is it so? Because the uh, method is to overcome this ego, the sense of I or sense of self. So that is the uh, number 10, right? Cessation of becoming. So becoming is the, the sense of I, the sense of ego. You know, when you become some personality, some uh, being, then that being will experience. You know, I will experience aging. I will experience sickness. I will experience death. So that is uh, the suffering. But if a person were to overcome this ego, overcome this I, then who is you know, experience this birth? aging, sickness, and death, right? So we talk about this uh, uh, becoming or ego. So the whole idea is uh, work on the reduction of craving and the rest will be solved. All right, so I give a short summary already. All right, any other questions? Then there's one from Facebook. Okay. Can Ajahn clarify whether Theravada Buddhism believe in becoming or rebirth? Some said it is becoming and not rebirth. I am confused. Thank you, Ajahn. <coughs> ah. Okay, uh, there is uh, rebirth in Theravada Buddhism, even in the uh, original sutta. This one is more, you can find it more on the point number 10, the link number 10. So it can cross-reference with uh, Maha Tanha Sankhaya Sutta, you know, the, the sutta where the Buddha reprimanded this uh, monk called uh, Sati that believed that consciousness is the one that you know, uh, goes through uh, around this uh, cycle of rebirth. <clears throat> okay, but anyway, uh, there's the mention of the descent into an embryo, a descent. Yeah, this uh, Gandhaba, or, or if you want to talk Mahadina Nidana Sutta, this consciousness that descend into this uh, embryo that causes conception. So it happens or occurs at point number 10, link number 10 on this birth. <coughs> Sorry, uh, link number 11. <coughs> okay, so in this Mahanidana Sutta, he's uh, talking about, uh, no, from... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, if consciousness were not to descend into the mother's womb, would name and form, right, take shape in the womb, right? Then another said no. So this one, this sutta is talking about uh, <clears throat> the Buddha giving an example on conception already. In this uh, sutta, I talked to Terence before. It's uh, talking about from point twelve to point one, link number twelve to link number one. So. The Buddha is giving the nearest example because link 12 is talking about aging and death and this uh, link 11 is talking about birth. So when the Buddha goes down uh, the order and he talks about this uh, name and form, then he carries on with the example on birth. So a lot of people would uh, mistaken uh, Nama Rupa as uh, this mind, right? This consciousness entering the womb and that process called Nama Rupa. Right, but uh, the earlier question is there a rebirth? Yes, there is. So it's in the link, link 11 on birth. All right, hopefully that answers the question. Any other questions? Everyone here all uh, understood? <laughs> Terence, you're muted. Okay, so if there's no questions, then we go for a five 
minute break. Then we can come back for the uh, guided meditation. Yeah. So see you all later. Okay, so I suppose most <clears throat> people are back. Okay, and uh, once we are <clears throat> uh, ready, find a comfortable uh, position. Make sure our back is upright and the uh, muscles are relaxed, not tense. Okay, so the whole idea now is to uh, First, uh, start off small, yeah, start off small area. We're going to just uh, maybe feel yeah, below the nose. One small area below the nostril, above the upper lip. So when the attention is isolated in one small restricted area, then it's uh, easier to observe. So we can ignore the rest of the senses. We have six senses, right? Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. So by feeling the breath, we are using our nervous system, the sense of touch. So that is the uh, body door consciousness. So we can ignore the uh, thinking, the hearing and so on. Eh? So all these sense doors are still there. Yeah, your eyes are still there, your ears are still there, your tongue is still there and so on. Yeah? But we focus on just one uh, small aspect. So by feeling just the sense of touch, are we able to observe, let's say, the forward order? So what is defined as stress or suffering? Right? When there's tension or discomfort, unease with the breath, So now you must remember this emotion or this state of mind. And then we are going to compare it to after we apply this right thought. Okay, so before we, uh, no, for newcomers, this is understandable, but for veteran, I mean, those uh, who have been attending my classes, now by right, you should be maintaining right mindfulness from the previous sessions and uh, try to keep the mind at ease. But if let's say you've forgotten about applying right mindfulness and your mind is clinging here and there, then we can start off from scratch, right? That means we remember this state of mind, uh, supposedly the mind of suffering, the mind of stress. <laughs> and how to overcome, how to reverse it. Right, so what we are going to do is we are going to apply right thoughts. Right, first, loving kindness towards the breath. So whenever there's an in inhalation, when you breathe in, wish the breath well. And whenever there's an exhalation, right, you breathe out, wish the breath happy. So loving kindness towards the breath. Try to overcome this uh, craving.
So this loving kindness is uh, not just a one second thought. Yeah? Every in breath, yeah? we should well, every out breath, we should happy. So it's a uh, quite continuous right effort. If there is no, if there's no thinking, then one will be bound to delusion. Some people think meditation is just quiet, sit there and do nothing. No, that is not true. Yeah? Meditation, you have to follow uh, a Buddhist meditation, especially you need to follow the Eightfold Path. So there's right effort, right thoughts. So there is thinking. So in my routine, there's lots and lots of thinking. So some people are thinking, right? How can lots of thinking bring the mind into a state of calm? We call this skillful thinking. Because once you do not think, then all kinds of stray thoughts will enter. We call it five hindrances. Restlessness, worry. This uh, greed and anger, uh, doubt, sloth and topper. So there must be thinking, uh, right thoughts. Okay, so if you notice that the mind is uh, calmed down in the process, because we try to solve the problem, the root problem is that a craving. So uh, once you reduce the craving with right thoughts, naturally the clinging will uh, lessen and the uh, mind will be at ease. That means lesser tension or lesser suffering. And then we can introduce the other right thought, which is uh, thoughts of non-greed and also non-delusion. So we are introducing the concept of impermanence, concept of change. So whenever we breathe in and out, there is always change. Something is changing. If there's no change, that means our breath is stopped. Yeah? So as long as we breathe, there definitely has to be some form of impermanence, some form of change. So uh, when we say observe the impermanence of the breath, uh, it can range from uh, something very gross, the physical in and out breath. If you're more sensitive, you can feel the four elements, the various sensations when you breathe in, right? the change of the density, which is the earth element, or change of the heat, right? change of temperature, which is the fire element, or change in your breathing rate, the fast and slow movements. That is the uh, wind element and the water element, the moisture. All right, and uh, some people might even feel maybe mental energy, which is the subtle four elements. All right, so these four elements, subtle four elements can occur sometimes even outside the skin of the body. Okay, so whichever spectrum of sensitivity you are, the whole idea is not to forget impermanence. It's not to say which uh, spectrum is better. Right? The, if you hold on to anyone, even let's say it's very subtle, you hold on to the, let's say, the sensitive, uh, subtle refined energy or the refined impermanence, uh, refined, sorry, refined four elements. That is also delusion. So we need to be mindful of impermanence all the time, not to deliberately uh, force or exert or create this uh, change, but to be a passive observer and uh, take note of any change. So whenever there's a change, you sort of like need to remind or sort of like repeat as though like a mantra in your mind, uh, this is change, this is change. This is rising and falling. This is birth and death, whichever terms you want to use.
Okay, the mind has uh, calmed down further from this uh, impermanence. Then we can extend the area to the entire body. So instead of one small area below the nose, we will extend the area to the entire body. So whatever sensation that arise, then you must take note of impermanence. So now we are still feeling the body, which is using our sense of touch. So although the area is uh, widened or slightly enlarged, the concept is still the same. Wherever your attention is at, uh, whichever part of the body, the whole idea is observe impermanence and the mind should uh, be less reactive. So you observe whenever there's a reaction, if let's say there is a reaction with uh, craving, greed or hatred, then you bring the mind to unease. But if there is right reflection, then the mind will be in a state of peace. So we're actually observing uh, both forward and reverse order. Forward order is basically the uh, first two noble truths, suffering and the cause of suffering. And the uh, reverse order is actually the last two noble truths, uh, cessation of suffering and the uh, method we use to apply to cease this suffering. Okay, then we are going to move on to a different exercise. Now it's a visualization exercise. Right now it's, uh, we're going to visualize our own body. <clears throat> right, so we're going to uh, visualize our hairs. So the same thing, now it's uh, using the mind sense law when we visualize our own body. We, are known. we don't have to use the sense of touch or sense of whatever. Yeah? So whatever image that appear in your mind, right, same thing, uh, either we use loving kindness first, 
and then you are going to apply impermanence. So impermanence will be the hair aging, decaying, and dropping off. Yeah, every day you'll have, we have lots of hair dropping off. Okay, so the whole idea of this visualization exercise yeah, has to be in line with this uh, <clears throat> understanding of the Four Noble Truths. Right, it's got to do with the detachment from uh, within the mind. So if, let's say, you know, if somebody do happen to develop, uh, let's say, divine eye, which is a very rare uh, chance, but if you do from this exercise, uh, then the foundation, this foundation must be there yeah? to detach from within. If not, you have extra tools and the tools will become a distraction. Uh, detour to your practice. Okay, then we can think of the nails, right, the fingernails and toenails, wish them well and happy. And uh, these nails go through this impermanence, birth and death. So the nails grow long, dirty, wear and tear. And the nails fall off whenever we scratch something or whenever we cut them. And then we can move on to our teeth, all the teeth in the mouth, wish the teeth well and happy. And all these teeth are subject to this birth and death. We change in this uh, shape and size, they get dirty, in this color, turn yellow, turn brown, turn black, tooth cavities get shaky and they fall off. And then we can think of the skin, skin surrounding the whole body, we should well and happy from head to toe.
and all the skin are subject to birth and death. You get oily, sweaty, dirty, and they wrinkle. Sometimes they crack. Sometimes they have their skin problems, skin irritation, turn red. Or have these uh, boils and pimples. And the dead skin fall off every day. And so the mind sense door has lots of uh, <clears throat> images throughout the day. Yeah? So can be things we worry, things we want to plan, things we think about the past. So all these are things that conjure up in the mind. So how can we detach from it? Right? So if we cannot even detach from uh, all the dramas and the things going on in the mind, right? and if you want to you know, develop seeing past lives, Chances is uh, you will also get dragged into the dramas of the uh, past lives and you can't even detach. So we talk about detachment from here and now. Yeah? So this is just a control training, a control kind of experiment uh, with just fixing a kind of object to visualize, which is our own body. Okay, and uh, once you're done with this exercise, then now we are going to move on to another form of exercise, which is to have this uh, unrestricted awareness. So this is even harder. So uh, we are basically not fixing the mind at any particular area or any particular space, but we are just uh, letting the mind be free so the mind can sort of travel around and we don't direct it. We do not push or exert it in any form or way. <clears throat> so the mind is sort of scattered, right? So in this scattered mind, we are supposed to truly understand in a very relaxed form when the mind is not uh, coerced in any fixed space then we can truly understand the mind, the workings of the mind. So how to do it? Yeah, we are going to catch your attention. Every moment we need to ask, where is our attention now? So this attention can move around through the six sense doors eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. So I talked about how this uh, consciousness operates through the six sense doors, right? So if, let's say I'm talking and if your ears are working, then most probably you're using your ear consciousness. <clears throat> right, so when this ear consciousness, uh, if let's say I stop talking, where is your attention now? So when this attention changes or this consciousness changes, this is the uh, here and now consciousness of the six sense basis, uh, no rebirth involved, no, no, one got, uh, no one gets pregnant or no one gets, uh, no conception takes place.
So when the mind is scattered, uh, <clears throat> you know, there are six avenues, right? Six sense bases, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. So the mind can go anywhere with the uh, sort of the strongest feeling, strongest kind of contact. It can be either pleasant feeling or unpleasant kind of feeling. So while observing these uh, movements of the mind or this uh, sort of dependent origination of the six senses, there's a high tendency to cling because now the area is so wide and all over the place. It's like freestyle, yeah? So whenever we are sort of able to track the mind, then we need to ask ourselves, have this right reflection to reduce craving. And so we can uh, <clears throat> use uh, these three guidelines. Basically, we are going to think of impermanence, but uh, you can investigate if you want. So the first question is, is this mind, is this five aggregates, yeah, this Nama Rupa, is it permanent or impermanent by itself without you uh, directing it? So you have to use your own personal evidence and observation, not intellectual kind of theory. Yeah? So this is first hand experience. You can see it for yourself here and now. It's your own uh, mind, yeah? your own five, five aggregates. And the second question right, is this five aggregates, yeah, this Nama Rupa. Is it truly self, truly ours? If it is truly ours, that means you have total control over the five aggregates. Yeah, you can tell the form to uh, maybe you know stay warm forever. Yeah or uh, stay, uh, you know, change the element, stay moist or stay, uh, you know, stay dry or whatever. <clears throat> or you can tell your feelings to be pleasant forever. Or you can tell your attention to stay at one place forever. And the next question, if you truly try to exert the mind, you have this expectation or craving, you want you know, nice feelings forever, or you want your attention to be you know, peaceful forever, will there be suffering? Will there be stress? So we are basically understanding both forward and reverse order.
So this is trying to work on uh, reducing uh, craving through this uh, desire realm kind of uh, consciousness. Yeah? <clears throat> so what if we were to uh, upgrade the state of mind, upgrade this uh, consciousness? Consciousness has a different spectrum also, different quality. So a desire realm kind of consciousness is uh, <clears throat> has a certain limitations, right? It's like uh, travel to another place through walking, yeah? So if you want to go a long distance, it will take a long time. So now we are going to do this uh, loving kindness. Right. Uh, using the same principle, right, of this uh, dependent origination. Okay, so we are going to wish all beings in front well and happy. And we come back to ourselves <clears throat> and we wish all beings behind well and happy. How oh, we are deliberately directing the mind. Yeah? So the challenge is how to direct the mind without strain, without stress. How to be detached and directing it at the same time. So now we're training to be multitasking it. Yeah? And we come back to ourselves. And we are going to wish all beings on the left well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. And we wish all beings on the right, well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. Now we wish all beings above, well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. And we wish all beings below well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. This time we feel the whole body with uh, loving kindness. And eventually we are going to wish all beings in all directions, above, below, and all across, starting from our house. All beings at home, be well and happy. And then we slowly extend to a larger area. May all beings in the neighborhood be well and happy. And we can extend the loving kindness to the entire country, whichever country you're in, may all beings in your country be well and happy.
And then we can extend this loving kindness to the whole planet. May all beings on earth be well and happy. So as we wish for world peace, and make sure the mind also has inner peace. And we will <clears throat> cling or not cling. For well, some people can be very well-meaning, you know, wish certain person well, want to help certain person or want to help the country or help the whole world. Do they do it with attachment or detachment? That's a very different outcome, yeah? The ideal case, you know, is you can help someone outside, but with a detached mind, still at ease and yourself free from anxiety or tension. And eventually, we are going to wish all beings in the entire universe May they be well and happy. So we maintain this um, boundless loving kindness as long as possible. So this is an enlarged kind of consciousness. And the uh, before that, there's this thing called activities, formations. So we are deliberately generating this karma, yeah? or this uh, <clears throat> loving kindness. So you produce uh, a certain kind of consciousness. And we change our intent. <clears throat> and we are going to switch it to compassion. Now we are going to wish all beings free from suffering. You produce a different kind of consciousness.
And then we can change the intent again, change this uh, volition, change this mental uh, formation. Uh, now we are using appreciative joy. I may all beings not be separated from what they have achieved. So sometimes this uh, four sublime states have produced uh, pleasant emotions and uh, they are subject to clinging. Right? So if we hold on to that emotion and stay with it for some time, then there is this thing called clinging and becoming. So if your person wants to detach, they can generate emotion, no problem, but you have to also have right contemplation, mindful of impermanence. So this is where we practice certain equanimity, right? All these uh, achievements and sufferings, their ups and downs. It's all because of karma, yeah? All these changes, rising and falling, happen all the time. And before we conclude the session, right, if we can maintain it long enough, uh, just another reminder from the Karaniya Metta Sutta, if a person were to be mindful of this boundless uh, sublime states, be it standing, sitting, walking, or lying down, then this is the highest conduct. And uh, with that in mind, we can physically conclude the meditation. Yeah, that's to say we can open our eyes, but mentally we are still meditating, having this uh, right mindfulness. All right, so we have a few minutes for any uh, final questions, any issues or problems or questions that anyone want to raise. Ah, oh, yes, Sinwi. Then there I was uh, actually have a question, but then I also uh, was asked, we are asked that what should we consider subject for the next year? I was thinking whether or not it's appropriate to go through the uh, Maha Sudapan. Sudipanna, is it correct? Oh, the so, four foundations of mindfulness. Yeah, the Maha Suti, Satipana Sutta. Satipatana so, Sutta. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, okay. All right, yeah. Appropriate things to do. <laughs> okay, sure. That's an uh, important uh, topic, even though I've covered in the retreat before, but it's uh, good to revise. All right, so, uh, no, no problems. We can talk about it, that's a good suggestion. Okay, so uh, thanks for the recommendation. Any other questions? Uh, Bhante. Ah, yes. Yeah, uh, just out of curiosity. Uh, does it mean that whoever doesn't know the theory of this original, uh, what, uh, dependent origination, or the theory of all what Buddha's teaching, does it mean that you'll be less a cultivator or not so successful in attainment? 
Uh, no, not necessary. The, if a person doesn't know the theory, the whole idea of this dependent origination is an experiential and it's a chain reaction. So even a person doesn't know the theory, uh, if they you know, still cling on the senses, that is still the forward order, it's still happening. You know, even if outside the meditation or even sitting meditation happens all the time. Right? So if they do know how to let go, they have the right kind of reflection, they don't need a theory as well. You know, it happens, the desire reduces and you know, things happen. They get mm. more peaceful. So this is the uh, uh, practice, yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you, Bhante. Okay, no problem. Yeah. So before the Buddha taught dependent origination, uh, in formally, I mean formally taught the dependent origination, there were already many disciples who got enlightened. <laughs> they do not know the theory of dependent origination. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So many arhats, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. Okay, yeah, so it has to do with the uh, uh, root teaching, which is the Four Noble Truths. The dependent origination is just expansion, just give more steps and more labels. <laughs> when they yes, Angie, yes. When, I, when we started with uh, breathing in uh, and breathing out, right? Then we are well happy well happy and then we are supposed to contemplate on uh impermanence i don't really know how to do that part how do you put hmm. on impermanence while we are breathing well oh uh, yeah yeah just feel the change so when you breathe in and out uh, you know when and when there's air moving there's already change so you just take note of the change yeah so mm -hmm. if you can feel the contact of the skin any uh change of the sensations that will also be fine yeah Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Then uh, one more thing you see, uh, when we are doing the four sublime state, right? Mm. Uh, during loving kindness, we, we, we uh, expand out all the way to the universe. So I could feel joy. Mm. And then we did the, uh, the other one is the uh, Karuna sure. that was okay. Then yeah. you feel a bit more subdued, but it's still very pleasant feeling. Yeah. But Mudita, I don't know how to uh, actually feel it how do you feel the, the mudita? Yeah, so, so you wish uh, beings uh, uh, something like congratulations, you know. So whatever beings, uh, whatever they achieve, may not may they not be separated from whatever they achieve. Yeah. Just say this uh, phrase. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's just a kind of thought. Yeah, you you uh, create this uh, mental formation. You create this uh, thought. Okay, thank you. I'll try. Okay, no problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Angie, I, I told this Angie I'm going through into the Facebook to to follow. But I I, I seem to have pressed the old one. So when I realized you're talking to me, then I said, oh, quickly, I better come back here. <laughs> I missed the earlier talk. Yeah, I was listening to a repeat. Oh dear. Just sharing. <laughs> See how IT savvy I am, I re, uh, Angie. <laughs> no problem, you are getting better. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, Yap, are you new? You need to find the uh, unmute, unmute button. button. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Excuse Namo Buddhaya Bhante. Yeah, I'm new to this um, session. Okay. I happen to see in uh, TBCM hosting. Okay, so alright. So I just um, open and see what can I learn. Ah, okay, alright. Welcome. Uh, so do you learn anything new or find it useful? Um, I am a regular meditator myself. Ah, okay. So, um, I mean, as I listen, because I also listen to um, suttas. Hmm. So when I when I listen to your talk, I try to uh, blend in with what I, I listen to. Hmm. 
Mm. Like uh, when when you were um, teaching just now about when we do meditation, um, we do um, all the four Brahma Viharas. Mm. So I um, I used to listen um, in this sutta where the Buddha said um, you imbued your meditation with I think is it a quarter of loving kindness, a quarter of is that related to what you're teaching just now? Uh, not not really, not really. Yeah, yes, uh, different uh, uh, Brahma Viharas. Yeah, we are switching. Yeah. Okay. Mm, okay. Thank you for the explanation. Okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you for joining. Uh, any questions? Okay, there's one from the chat. You see? Yeah. Oh, there is. I can't see anybody. Any chat? Okay. I'll read out. Hi, Ajahn. Uh, during the meditation practice, when we ask these questions, example, what's my mind thinking? It seems that we are talking to ourselves or like talking to a third person, i.e. the mind. I sometimes think I am going crazy talking to myself. Have I misunderstood something? Okay, Ajahn. At hey, which part? At hey, which part? JC, do you want to unmute and clarify your question? Hello, Ajahn. Okay. Um, uh, at which part? Um, at the starting part, when we ask questions like, uh, or when we say, uh, may I be well and happy? Okay. Yeah, so ain't I talking to myself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This the, the mind generating the, the sub-vocalization, so nothing wrong, yeah. So we need to have uh, these uh, right thoughts. So it can come in the form of uh, sub-vocal thoughts or it can come in the form of uh, emotional impressions. So there are many ways to generate uh, these uh, mental formations. So uh, no, yours is, uh, it's a class, it's instruction. So I will have to use uh, no, vocal, yeah? But if you can just generate the emotion without the words, that's also fine. Mm. Okay, right, but to you. be sure it is correct, then it's good to uh, have uh, these uh, words as a guideline uh, yeah? mm. to make sure you, you know, synchronize correctly. Mm. Or like when I'm asking what is my mind thinking when I hear something, that's also talking to myself, right? Yeah, it's a self uh, kind of evaluation, yeah. Okay, thank so you. So there's lots of uh, investigation also, yeah? Mm. Okay, thank All you. Right. Thank you for asking. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe some people aren't used to questioning and talking to themselves. So <laughs> yeah, different people have different uh, experience. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Bante, one more time. Uh, yeah. My tendency is, you say free the mind, do not think anything. I will mm -hmm. just go to my uh, uh, abdomen again, mm -hmm. which is my natural way of doing. Yeah. Uh, it does work in a way once in a while because I think nowadays it works because whatever, whatever things disturb me, I, I'm i okay, you know, it will go off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very fast it will go off. So. So I, I wasn't maybe following what you're saying, like I'm free the mind, you know, mm -hmm. but ultimately I'll go to my abdomen. So is that mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, if you're used to that training, it's good. Uh, but you know, that's why in my, my routine, we have uh, different uh, kinds of training for different cognitive functions. Uh, you know, just in case, you know, uh, let's say, uh, what if a person you know, gets uh, paralyzed you know, from the waist down. No, you can't, they probably they can't feel the abdomen. Right? Let's say the, the neck or no, mm -hmm. the injury or whatever. So okay. uh, can we still practice detachment? You know, what are the contexts we cling on to? What are the contexts we experience? So uh, it's good to train various aspects. So when we are relaxing, we may not be feeling the abdomen no, when we are, you know, let's say, you know, going to uh, the moment before we're going to sleep or just uh, waiting or doing nothing so the mind is in a scattered mode so 
can we still practice detachment? Right? But of course, if a person can uh, hold on to a meditation object uh, throughout the day, you know, uh, let's say loving kindness, or if you can feel them dormant throughout the day, then uh, yeah, that's fine by all means. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. They're more like using skillful means. Uh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no uh, problem. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions? Okay, if there's no... Bante, yeah. sorry, there's one from Bunket. Uh, okay. Bante, what's the main purpose of meditation? Ah, okay. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, whole idea of mental cultivation, right? It's, uh, it's in line with the Noble Eightfold Path, right? It's to overcome this uh, suffering. So the whole idea of right thoughts is to reduce craving. Right? So it kind of break the chain of this uh, uh, dependent origination right? and uh, eventually overcome this uh, suffering. So hopefully that answers your question. So, yeah, that's it. Huh? No more question. Okay, then we can uh, conclude. Okay, so we have the closing chant, the uh, Anumodana, dedication of merits. Akasata Jabhumata Devanaga Mahitika Punyang tang anumoditwa, chirang raka tu loka sasana, eta vataja anghehi, sampadam punya sampadam, sabe deva sabe puta sabe sata anumodatu, sapa sapa de sedia. Transference of merits to a departed. Ida menya tina hotu, sukita hotu nyata yo. Ida menya tina hotu, sukita hotu nyata yo. Ida menya tina hotu, sukita hotu nyata yo. And aspiration, imina punya kamena, mame bala samagamo, satang samagamo hotu. Yavani Bana Patiya Sadhu 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 and uh, wish you all an uh, advanced uh, Happy New Year and uh, see you all next year, 5th January. Yeah? And the topic will be uh, suggested by Sinwi in these uh, four uh, foundations of mindfulness. Okay, so that's it. Thank, Thank you, Bhante. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Happy New Year. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Thank you, Bhante.